Well, for the first time in eight years tonight, the Quincy Notre Dame volleyball squad is celebrating a sectional championship and now just one win shy of a trip to the state final four. Taking care of business tonight at the expense of Pleasant Plains, the insanely balanced Pleasant Plains over at the Beardstown sectional tonight. It is Miss Watercutty making her presence felt first here with the block to extend a rather large Q&D lead. And then Miss Watercutty yet again coming through with a kill as Q&D would win game number one. 25 to 15. Game two, more of the same from the Lady Raiders. Cassidy Foley with the quick ace right here. Plains trying to keep uh, its balance in this game. It will be Callie Whetstone with the set back over to keep this ball inbounds and to keep the Cardinals alive. QD though in seek and destroy mode at that point. Kristen Gingenbacher hooks up with Kate Gennenbacher who gets the kill right there. And then it's Cassidy Foley yet again. The Raiders taking care of business big time tonight as they win and advance on 25-19 in the second game. Quincy Notre Dame moving on to the Farmington Super Sectional where their opponent will be Port Byron. And that game will take place again Saturday at 6 o'clock. Port Byron, a winner in straight games tonight over Princeton. Class 1A now, it was Payson Seymour taking on a really good Springfield Lutheran team, which came dressed to the nines tonight. Early on, it is the former Jacksonville star, Abby Heiss, who transferred to Lutheran. She looks really good, setting the tone with a kill right out of the blocks. But here come the Payson Seymour Lady Indians, your reigning student athlete of the week. Catherine Richards throws down with a big kill. She's not done making her impact felt at the net, not by a long shot. Shot right here, looking for the side out. It's Richards first, the attempted kill, and then she's going to hustle her way back to the spot and throw down the block as well. Great night for her. Better night, however, for Joss Jesslin wrote the outstanding superstar from Springfield Lutheran. Kill for her right here, right into your living room. Lacey Hagerbomber from uh, Pace and Seymour going to answer back with a block this time on Rote, but Rote would have the last laugh. Couple of kills in this one down the stretch as Lutheran wins in straight games tonight and eliminates Pace and Seymour two games to nil. Up next for them will be Minden Unity, an upstart winner tonight in the sectional. Congratulations to Seth's team as they knock off uh, Illini Central two games to none. Mr. Klusmeyer and company with a showdown with Springfield Lutheran on Saturday. We'll talk more about that game coming up at 6 o'clock tomorrow. Also, big news for the Canton boys soccer team, the first ever district title of any sort for soccer at Canton as Canton beats MMA 2 to nil. Austin Hoeing with both goals in that game for the victorious Tigers. Well, they've got an unblemished record and are ranked number one in the state right now. But it wasn't until Saturday's blowout win over route that Rich Thompson thought his offense at Triopia had truly found its rhythm for the first time this year. Really hadn't clicked at times offensively, but I thought last week for the first two quarters were as sharp as we had looked. And I thought we were able to spread the ball around to all of our weapons, and that was important too, using Tanner and Jansen and John. But Derek had a big day. He's going to be our workhorse. And uh, I thought Waylon really stepped up and ran well. Cody Curry ran well. Uh, so, yeah, I was really pleased with our effort. The timing of that offensive surge could not be more perfect. As come Saturday, Gibson City Melvin Sibley will put Triopia's much celebrated defense to its most stringent test yet. Well, I think it's a challenge. Uh, they've got a big fullback that's going to come right at us. We're really going to have to play physical downhill and continue to do what we've been doing and getting five, six, seven hats to the ball uh, because this young man uh, is going to break some tackles. we got to play with our speed. They have a lot of size and they have a lot of power. We just need to get to the ball fast, get all guys to the ball, and just make sure we got everybody on them so we can take them down. They've done a great job. Um, this team has always, this group has always played uh, pretty good defense, but I wasn't sure going in if they could play it at the varsity level because uh, we're not real big, but you know, we're quick, we're physical, we get to the ball, and I think our overall team speed is what's really uh, the strength of this defense. Uh, and our two bookends with Dakota coming off one end and John Love coming off the other end, it, those two kind of set the tone and keep everything inside, and then we're getting good pressure up the middle as well. We got a lot of confidence coming to this one, and we just got to play our defense and do what we do. We've got the debut tonight in men's college basketball at Culver Stockton for Jack Schrader. This team looks pretty darn good already. Jordan Lassiter right here doing yeoman's work on the offensive glass, putting that back up and in. His team trailing at that point by four. Dushan Koich, Koich, I should say, 
Dushan Koyic. I'm going to say that name right sometime this season. Dushan Koyic with 12 points to lead the way tonight for the Wildcats. They had to rally back from an eight point deficit because every day is Halloween on the hill. They would do exactly that. Jason Tucker making his presence felt with a nice jump shot right here. And we'll leave you with some outstanding play right here down the stretch by Jacob Schuster as the Wildcats rally all the way back and win by four tonight. Mr. Schuster about to polish off the nice victory at the other end with the transition layup. The Wildcats win 52 to 48. Also, Hannibal Grange losers tonight by the final count of 83 to 70.